actors to armourers, set designers to stunt performers, the UK has some of the best movie making talent in the world and fortunately it has the big screen backdrops to match. I'm Ali Plum and I'm about to show you some of the most amazing Hollywood filming locations that you never knew were actually just down the road. This is the Film Fan's Guide to Liverpool. But our trip around the secret filming locations of this great city doesn't actually begin here. It starts in Manchester, awkwardly. After weedy but earnest Steve Rogers had a shot of super serum, turning him from a proper Alley Plum-like pipe cleaner into the uber buff, perfectly spectacular Captain America, his first order of business was to chase down a dastardly Hydra agent. And sure, it looks like 1940s New York, but actually thanks to some Hollywood geography, as I like to call it, it's actually Dale Street in Manchester. And then, just by turning a corner, He's at the historic and now rather fashionable Stanley Dock. First, he's getting some shield practice in with a taxi door. Then diving into the Mersey to outswim a submarine, giving us a taste of just how good at superheroing our Stevie Rodge was going to be. Note to self, never say Stevie Rodge again. These Victorian red brick warehouses make an excellent backdrop for old school action sequences. And Chris Evans, not that one, isn't the only Avenger to make use of them. Robert Downey Jr. came here for his first Sherlock Holmes outing. You'll notice this is the same place where Cap destroyed a cabbie's no claims bonus, now suddenly the entranceway to an under construction tower bridge. And just as Captain America kicked some ass here, language, Sherlock and Watson had theirs handed to them. Boom, boom, and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in Gotham. And you can tell because the architecture is so Gothamy, Gothamy, Gothamy. Basically, Batman's bat gaff is now bat here, and it's not bat hard to see why. The liver building behind me is the perfect example of that gothic vibe Gotham goes for. Imposing, severe, adorned with giant winged creatures. It's the ideal platform for Robert Pattinson's The Batman to leap off in an impressive, vertigo-inducing wingsuit sequence. And if you're a real diehard fan of the Cape Crusader, you can take a tour up here and follow in Arbatz's footsteps, but you cannot, and they are clear about this, jump off this building. But if you were to parachute down, you might land in Moscow, or rather in front of the Cunard building next door, which doubled for somewhere near the Kremlin in 2014's Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit, feeling distinctly more Russian than Kenneth Branagh's accent. You can't stop it. <laughs> This is the spot where Chris Pine's Jack Ryan saves Kira Knightley from Kenneth's evil grasp. It was all very exciting. Not exciting enough to secure a sequel, sure, but it exists. I told you, Batman loves it here. Big, big Batman. This is St. George's Hall, where the so-called world's greatest detective attended an undeniably memorable funeral. And whilst Liverpool's architecture here is perfect for the grand grey Gotham of the Batman, some CGI magicians were brought in later to bruce up the background. And if you do come to this hallowed hall, and you should by the way, it's great, you won't just be visiting Gotham, you'll also be stepping into the wizarding world and back in time, because this is 1920s New York. In Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, they use the Grand Hall inside for a political rally, where there's lots of room for big flags and roaring 20s brass fittings. And it's here, with a bit of studio help, sure, that Eddie Redmayne's Newt in the suitably emotional finale of the first film releases the all-important Thunderbird, somehow forgetting to say Thunderbird is go as he did so. This is basic stuff, Eddie. Basic. As the final fight in the first Creed film took place in Everton's Goodison Park Stadium, it made sense for St George's Hall to play host to the press conference between Adonis Donny Creed, that's Michael B. Jordan himself, and real-life Brit boxer Tony Bellew, who must have loved it when, through CGI, his face suddenly appeared everywhere. And Everton's ground isn't the only one to feature on film here. There's also the small matter of... Anfield, the home of Liverpool Football Club, ideal for generating instant Liverpudlian atmos. And if you're a diehard Robert Carlyle fan, you may know this already, the setting for the final act of 51st Date. Whilst not everything in the ending was actually shot here at Anfield itself, it's worth a special mention because this is where Sam Jackson slipped meatloaf a poison that made him explode, covering the place in a thick gloop of pure concentrated extra meaty loaf. 
I tell you what, the way Liverpool are playing this season, it's like half the team are poisoned because they're not playing very well. Am I right? Am I right? I don't know. I barely know anything about football. Although I do know that the players enter and exit the pitch using something known as the tunnel, which is enough of a segue to get us here, right? Conveniently wide and beautifully generic enough to be anywhere in the world, this is Queensway Tunnel and it's seen more on-screen chases than Bradley Walsh. First, in a rip-roaring sequence in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, where the boy who lived flees the Death Eaters in Hagrid's sidecar. In the film, they actually began this chase sequence in the Dartford Tunnel, you know, down south. But the interiors were all shot here in Liverpool city centre. The filming was shrouded in secrecy, kind of like an invisibility cloak, ish, over four nights. They made use of all four lanes in the tunnel, with two used for the actual actors acting, doing stunts, that sort of thing, and another two for the equipment, and there was a tiny bit of space for CGI. Doubling again for the big smoke, the Queensway Tunnel then made an appearance in Fast and the Furious 6 as well. And those petrol heads, or the family as they like to call themselves, needed all four lanes for their high octane action because they just flipping love flipping cars. And it was also used in Jack Ryan's Shadow Recruit, with Chris Pine speeding from above ground in New York to deep underneath the Mersey. Well, I guess it made sense if they were in town already. So I've mentioned the football, the Mersey, the Batman. What am I forgetting? Oh! The Beatles. The city, of course, has played host to a number of Beatles-themed films over the years. Yesterday, Backbeat. It's a long and winding list, but this scene from the young John Lennon boyopic Nowhere Boy seems the most poignant. Lennon's mother, played by Anne-Marie Duff, takes young John, played by Aaron Taylor-Johnson, to this very cinema, the one the Beatle-to-be went to as a kid in real life. It's really the crux of the film, as it's what he sees on screen in this seminal moment that inspires him to become a performer. Weirdly, in the movie, it isn't a big projection of me on the screen, it's the other king of rock and roll. Elvis, I want to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that's it for the thoroughly cinematic Liverpool. I've had a great time, and I'm sure you have too. Don't forget to watch or re-watch the movies themselves, and maybe check out the locations if you have the time. Otherwise, I'll see you for the next Film Fans Guide 2 oh so soon.